cheesy missiles. <laughs> Just get told off for not saying. Hello, <laughs> Mrs. Bonneville, where are we? Um, we're on Narrowboat Love Life Triumph. Wow, she's got it right. And yes, did you miss us? We are going to do our, well, I was going to say monthly podcast, but we've been really bad for the last couple of months. Apologies, but I've been busy at work and Mrs. Bonneville's been busy doing Mrs. Bonneville things. So this is our recorded podcast. If you um, aren't one of those that want to watch it in a kind of recorded format, There'll be a link in the description um, straight through to our podcast site so you can listen to it. But this is our podcast. Mrs. Bonneville, what's been the highlight of the last couple of weeks? I say that because I'm just getting the questions. Oh, up. right. Okay, okay. <laughs> Which I haven't seen. Have I? I Mrs. haven't Mrs. Bonneville seen the never sees the questions. Never see the questions. Um, I suppose the highlight has been two things. One thing was going out to a restaurant. <gasps> to the brilliant lotus tree and going into a restaurant well Pause. sorry the lotus tree is our local indian restaurant on the marina for those that don't know beautiful so that was thrilling actually going out and sitting at a table and stuff second thing and that this is in no particular order is our new captain's chair which we will talk about yes right so that was just a little filler so yeah, we got the okay, questions yeah. up right a couple of shout outs before we start our podcast um steve and Hills over on the uh, pontoon across the way. Thank you, fella, for the um, advice to date with fishing. I've just taken up fishing um, and he's been brilliant in terms of just setting up a few things as are our neighbors on Narrow Boat Goldfinch. But Steve, thank you. And a massive thank you as well, Steve, for the, uh, the fishing rod. I, I was blown away, thank you. And hello to the good lady wife, Hills. And the second shout out is for John from Narrowboat Snails Pace. John, mm. thank you. John very kindly left um, a few books for us to read recently. So massive, massive thank yeah, you. Yeah, brilliant that. books. Really nice. Yeah, yeah all thank motorbike you. books. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So for those that are new here, we do, uh, I say, monthly. It's usually monthly. It's usually the last Sunday of the month, but we've just been a bit busy the last couple of months. So apologies. We will try to get back to a regular last Sunday of the month. Um, but for those that are new, we do a recorded podcast where we basically answer all of the questions you folk have kindly sent in via YouTube comments and our website, lovelifetriumph.co.uk. Mrs. B has no idea what none, the questions. None Seriously, at all. trust us on that one. She hasn't got a clue. Um, I just literally cut and paste onto the iPad here, um, as I say, from the comments section or the inquiry form on our website. Are you ready, Mrs. Bonneville? Yes, ready. I'm gonna have a quick, quick slur for me coffee. <laughs> You're right with the silence. <laughs> All right, let's crack on. One of the nice things about living on a boat, isn't it? Oh yeah. Tranquility. M many things. Mm. Right. Okay. Let's start. So this first question, <clears throat> excuse me, has come from Stuart via the YouTube comments. Um, Stuart doesn't let us know where he lives, which is absolutely fine. Mm. So it's just Stuart from YouTube comments. Um, and it's basically, what's the best thing you've bought for the boat and why? One item each. Um, please keep the vids coming. We absolutely love them. Stu, thank you. Mrs. Bonneville, what is the best thing we've bought from the boat? For, bought, the, boat. for the boat, sorry, and why? Um, I'm going to go with the bed, uh, to be honest The bed with extension. You bed extension we've now got a super king size so as much as i love mr b and i do love him dearly it's nice to have him over there and me over here there's so much space in the bed and i've never slept so well as in that bed so the bed for me it's lovely what okay you? fair enough um what's the best thing we've bought god Stuart, i'm gonna i'm gonna actually say two things i'm really sorry in fact i'm gonna show you um one of them is in this room which we recently purchased I'm just gonna pick up the camera and show you it is actually say hello Mrs Bonneville it is actually behind Mrs Bonneville there it is the Dyson hot and cool um, it is an amazing piece of kit we recently went on to sorry about the uh, camera moving around folks yeah we recently went on to um, our good friends from narrowboat goldfinch boat for a couple of drinks on now, the stern do, on the stern um sorry about the uh, shaky footage folks yeah we recently went onto their boat and the weather 
it was fairly late in the evening the weather wasn't great was it and out comes the Dyson hot and cold well I'm all over it because one within seconds and I'm not joking within seconds of the boys switching it on um, the uh, environment the cruise astern was lovely and warm we, when we had we had the door the zip door open, open. and you know they had it face yeah. we would have like sat round on the on the on the bench thing yeah and he put the heating on and even though we got the door open the heating was just yeah, it was lovely fantastic. it was great so and secondly uh, mrs bonneville feels the cold they're not cheap i warn you now they are not cheap but we got one um, of the cheaper ones didn't we because it goes up to a fortune well we paid 400 pound for ours um so yeah there are more but i don't think that's cheap um but it is brilliant and the second i'm actually going to show you again sorry I'm going to pick up the camera. Mrs. B, talk amongst yourself. <laughs> talk amongst yourself. Um, let me just I don't go know what through. You're going to, I don't <laughs> so, know what you're going to show. Oh, I do know what you're going to show. Mrs. Bonneville likes the bed, which I would agree with. The second one, I'm sorry, Stuart, you did only say one, um, is this here. That is our dehumidifier, which a, a friend across the pontoon recommended. Lovely boater. Very, very experienced boater. Um, don't get me wrong, we haven't got any problems with condensation well we have all boats have condensation we don't have any problems with damp and mold and it's primarily sorry about all this shaky footage primarily it's because of that that dehumidifier and i really i'm going to say something that's probably going to cause a little bit of a reaction sorry about not you yeah dare i say it now i'm going to say something if you think your boat does not <laughs> uh if you think your boat doesn't suffer with um, condensation or the possibility of, of mold you are kidding yourself ours is a brand new boat it's well insulated um, spray foam blah 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 um, but that little dehumidifier through the winter months we were running it just a couple of hours every day once a week we open up the bed we can lift the bed up and put it under there etc etc in the wardrobe we haven't got a spot of the you know what we haven't got any mold on this boat it's a dry boat but if anyone thinks their boat, new or old, uh, doesn't need a dehumidifier, honest to God, it's the best. It, I think it's the best piece of advice we've had in terms of technical living on a boat. Um, so Stuart, sorry it's two. Mrs B's was the bed, the bed extension. And mine is the hot and cold fan from Dyson and the dehumidifier. Right, let me get the old iPad back and move on to the next question. Um, which has come from let's let's where are we where are we where are we uh, Paul and Pat um, from Cumbria and Paul and Pat have sent in this question via Love Life Triumph um, dot co dot uk we love you pair you are so refreshing and so very entertaining thank you thank you I think really they were talking about me more than <laughs> <this>. <laughs> um, quick question um, from Paul and Pat what's the best sorry <coughs> Of all the places you visited in the world, what's the best place you've been to uh, and why? Um, well, that's a really good question. Um, Mrs. B, I keep putting Mrs. B on the spot to go first. It does, and, and I honestly, <laughs> please believe me, I do not know what these questions are. Um, oh, the best place. Do you, know, do you know what I'm going to pick, actually, what I'm going to pick? Of all the lovely, um, um, you know, we've been through the Alps and oh, stuff, which is, which is beautiful. But we had, a few years ago, we went to a place called Porta della Cruz, which is north of Tenerife, the green bit. And the it's, north part of Tenerife. Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, it's where Mount Tibi is. Yeah. And um, we hired a little sports car, a little spider, and we got up about half past four one morning, and it was pitch black, and there was nobody about, just the odd delivery driver. And we, ro we drove up to Mount Tibi and got up there when it was still pitch black, and it was like something from a horror film and we saw the sunrise uh, over the volcano and there was not one person there we had the place to ourselves and it was the most eeriest place ever <laughs> I, I can't describe to you what it was like it was just amazing so of all the lovely places that we've been in I could list hundreds that to me will stick in my mind as being the most I suppose the most weird place to be at that time in the morning very good um mine might surprise in terms of oh but it's one of those i think and it's personal unless you've been there mrs b's been there with me is the hoover dam we oh, did a trip to vegas a number of years ago and again we hired a beautiful beautiful car 
um, and we found ourselves um, looking over the Hoover Dam. For me, that was mind-blowingly amazing from yeah. an engineering perspective and a construction. Um, it was just amazing. So if you've not been or you get a chance to go to the Hoover Dam, just to take a look at the sheer enormity and scale and, and engineering marvel that it is, Hoover Dam for me. Um, and that may surprise a few folk, but I was just blown away with that place. Can I, can I just say, just very quickly, as we were going on the plane to Las Vegas, um, that film was out with uh, The Rock, what do you call him? Um, or oh, The Rock. Yeah. And, yeah. Dwayne and Johnson. That's it. And it was that C C Savannah Straits or something. And it was about the Hoover Dam bursting. <laughs> Uh, when yes, can you remember was. that was on the yeah, plane yeah, and then yeah, when yeah. we went there yeah. and then we, we we were stood on a bridge looking at the Hoover Dam and you think wow if that did actually burst well we wouldn't be yeah, here yeah let's not talk about no. that but yeah no Hoover Dam for me um, amazing amazing place thank you for the question thank um, you right this has come from it's just Steve and Kath not put where they're from which is absolutely fine and again it's come via lovelifetriumph.co.uk um, and they have said, um, love the vlogs and the approach you both take on life. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so refreshing and you always make us laugh. Please don't change and take your boat out when you are good and ready. Thank uh, you. <laughs> we, of course we will. Thank you very yes, much for that. Absolutely. Let me be very clear, as we always are, we'll take our boat out when we want to take our boat out. But thank you. Um, question. Um, we love Mercy Marina and used to moor there. Ah. Um, had three fantastic years there. We are now living over in southern Spain. <gasps> oh. Hate you already. Uh, we are now living over in southern Spain um, and really do miss not having a narrowboat. We have a few friends still on the marina and they tell us that more and more lodges are being built, which we understand is causing a mixed reaction. Mm. What are your views uh, on the lodges uh, and more... Um, Sorry, and more of them coming uh, on the way. Sorry, I, it was a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to anticipate you suggesting there. What's our views on the lodges and more lodges being built? Mm. It was a little bit in terms because I just cut and paste these questions. I don't change anything. Um, thanks again for the weekly vlog. Um, all the work that goes in really is appreciated. Um, and the odd thumbs down must be so annoying. Not really. Um, it annoys us when we see them and we don't get uh, and don't get us on well deck diaries um they are our second favorite channel after you oh thank um, you and it really does annoy us when they get thumbs <gasps> down oh, particularly too. in us. terms particularly in terms of what they've just gone through sorry Mrs. yeah Dave. sorry yeah it does it gets us really annoyed yeah it that, does yeah. i think some of the thumbs down the well deck diaries get is just mystifying yeah um, and it really really does but don't you think that brings me. home the th what you always say sad about bedroom bottom fingers. internet warriors yeah, yeah yeah they just they just right, move on nothing yeah nothing. so um what are our views on the lodges i love them being here and what are our views on the lodges being um developed further in terms of more of them being put on the marina i i, I like them I, do, I don't i don't but well, it's my view my for whatever my little view is worth i don't mind the lodges at all i think they're beautiful and i think they just they add to it you know it, it adds a nice <laughs> my Thank usual you. i'm not going to have a rant but they're um, pretty they're, they're pretty I, they're, they're they're nice they're not they're not an eyesore they're lovely i i'm i'm with mrs b i i, I really like the lodges mm. really like them i think they're wonderful buildings um and i'm going to say something again because it's just my view so please you know appreciate you don't have to agree with it but appreciate respect it because it's just my view um yeah it does the question is you know what's the view yeah and it splits opinion mm. on the marina um i've heard you know opinions of oh you know there shouldn't be lodges here there's too many shops there's too many restaurants it's more like a a holiday park etc etc um you know my view on that is if you know with, with the greatest of respect if you don't like it move go to another marina that hasn't got lodges and hasn't got all the wonderful facilities that mercy has got one of the main reasons in fact the main reason we came here wasn't because of the lodges it was the whole package it, yeah it, it is um it's almost like a um a leisure resort a retreat whatever you want to call it there's boats there's lodges there's some fabulous little boutique shops um there's an amazing restaurant and yes mercy and marina have plans to develop that further bring it on mercy mm. i think it's amazing um but as i say the greatest respect for those that really really don't like it go to another marina it's like people that complain about the tv there's about six thousand channels on the tv 
It's, do you have another channel? Yeah, you know, greatest respect. We think Mercia is the best marina in the UK. End of. Uh, we looked at a few, not not to compare, but we just looked at a few of the marinas. You know, if I wanted a quiet life uh, and a real, you know, when I say quiet life, just just pure boats, um, it it wouldn't be Mercia. But we love it for what it is. The community. Um, it's correct. It We're is sociable. brilliant here. We love yeah. it. So. Um, our, there, there's our views on the lodges. Um, we like we, them. We think they're amazing. Yeah. We really do. Can um, I just can I just say another thing? I'm sorry, I'm just going to add this thing because it's just in my head. It's in my head. I got to add in. So the, so they they're doing all sorts of different things on the marine. There's all sorts of different things coming in, and uh, one of the things we can't wait for, and we will vlog it. They're bringing in electric scooters. <laughs> Bring it on. We will hire the electric scooters, and we will film that. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. It's a fun old car you can keep up right on a bicycle, let alone a scooter. But yeah, we will film it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so listen, um, we love we love the lodges, we love the, what, what the marina are planning to do. I will also balance that. There are some mini frustrations I personally have in terms of, you know, some of the things that maybe, you know, need to be done and, and getting cracking, you know, to get that done. Um, but I also appreciate the marina is a large entity, it, it's a large, you know, piece of land. Um, but generally, generally speaking, um, you know, my my view and mark for the marina would be a firm nine point five out of ten. It really would be. Mm. Um, and as I say, with the plaintest, and I don't mean to cause any offence to those, you know, that are possibly on the marina right now. But I don't mean any offence. But if it's really that, you know, upsetting, move. Just get one life, go live it. And if it's not here because you don't like it, just go somewhere. If we else. didn't like it, we wouldn't be here. We'd go. Me, we'd we go. would go. Um, so anyway, look, I've laboured that too too much, but thank you. Um, Scott and Paul from Shropshire uh, via Love Life Triumph. And on this, can I just make a quick shout out, um, almost a plea. Um, it's easier for us to gather the questions for the podcast via the comment section on YouTube. So if you can pop them in there, it's fantastic that you go across to both mm. platforms. It's just, it's easier if I can just collect them from the YouTube comments section. And also for those that have got questions um, that may not figure on this particular um, recorded podcast, please bear with, we get so many questions on the website. Please, please keep them coming though. But if you can direct them to um, the actual comment section, on the YouTube channel, it's just easier. Trust me, it's just easier. And we will answer them all. Oh yeah, yeah. Eventually. As I say, those that are currently sitting on the website, um, please, please do not worry. Um, we will get to them. So thank you for sending them in. Right. So Scott and Paul um, from Shropshire, um, we have just discovered the channel. Where have you been? Why? Why now? Come on. We have just discovered the channel and simply have to say, you pair are a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Thank you. Love the weekly walks. Uh, and when you say you are floaters, not boaters, we laugh because we are the same. <laughs> do you know what? Scott and Paul, I know it annoys some folk. We don't do it intentionally, but we are floaters and we love it. It's a lifestyle. You don't have to take your boat out every day, so don't. Um, by the way, just because boats are moored on the canal doesn't mean that they are all continuous cruisers. Don't get me on it, um, but I agree. Um, is it the same on the canal as it is on the marina? Um, don't know keep it up because not enough folk who buy a boat admit they just want to live in it and enjoy the lifestyle we've got neighbours we've referenced them several times I'm going to call them out um, Paul and Neil and Smudge the Cat yeah. um, Narrowboat Goldfinch go check out their channel by the way just lovely um, videos of course uh, stuff, yeah, yeah they're very creative not jealous um, but Paul and Neil I'm sure you wouldn't mind me saying um, boys are very similar to us absolutely in that Primarily, they've bought the boat and, and live on the marina because it's the lifestyle they're after. Um, so, yeah, you know, <laughs> floaters, not boaters. Um, anyway, look, the question is, where did you get the sofa from? What sofa? <laughs> where do you get the sofa from, please? And are you happy with it? Uh, we are about to replace our captain's chair. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this you is couldn't funny. plan this. Um, <laughs> We are about to replace our captain's chairs and are seriously considering a sofa because that one you have looks so comfy. Uh, thanks again. Please keep the vlogs coming. P.S. Paul rides bikes and swears he saw you once give a talk about overland motorbike travel at Horizons Unlimited event. Was that you? If so, are you still riding? 
Paul, yes, it was me. Um, again, I don't want to go down the, the, the motorbike route, but for those that um, aren't sure what he's on about, Horizons Unlimited is the best overland travel website on the planet, whether you're on a motorbike or a vehicle, a, a pedal bike, walking, uh, Sue and Grant Thornton. It's an amazing, amazing free um, service that they offer called Horizons Unlimited. And yes, I was very, very fortunate enough a number of years ago to be uh, invited to do a talk on overland travel. So yes, that was me. Hope you enjoyed the talk and you've recovered from it. Um, right, <laughs> so as you can see, we've no longer got a sofa. Mrs. Barnable, why have we no longer got a sofa? Well, can I just say, if you are thinking about getting a sofa, go to New, New Brew. N New Brew, N-U-B-R-U. New brew. Uh, they're brilliant. Yeah. There's, there's lots of pieces that you have to put together, but there's no glue, there's no screws, there's no nothing. It all fits together. The sofa that we had was from New Brew, and it was lovely. We, we, yeah, the quality was amazing. The quality was lovely, and we did like it. But I, I, do you know what I think? I know this is going to sound really stupid, and you can agree or disagree with me on this, Mr. B. Is it, it was almost too comfortable. You found yourself almost being like a, a, a lounge room lizard. Are you really that sound, okay, does right. that sound a bit no stern? no I, I, I can see where you're going with that um, back up a step again Mrs B spot on the money here she always is um, the, the thing that blew us away with the new brew sofa is there wasn't a nail a screw or a piece of glue involved so for those that um, you know are wondering what the hell you're on about just go back into our video mm. catalogue and you'll see a couple of videos with the sofa and it was amazing quality i started off thinking it was comfortable and um, it became really comfortable when you were on it on your own it was a big three-seater and i used to sometimes in the morning because i get up really early with work do some emails and to be honest then i have about an hour's snooze it was fantastic for that now i'm going to actually blame our wonderful neighbors uh, off narrowboat goldfinch uh, for a number of things tongue-in-cheek one our Dyson hot and cold cost us a fortune and our chairs because recently we were on their boat and it's a beautiful boat um, and Neil and Paul just happened to say oh go sit on the chairs and try them out for comfort as soon as we sat on them that was it following day we were at Midland Chandler's day later these were erected um, so the question is where do we get the sofa from new brew were we happy with it yes I just didn't think it was as comfortable um, as what I wanted stroke anticipated it needing mm. to be. You're right about having one person on it. I yeah. know sometimes if I've had a if I've had a lazy afternoon with Columbo uh, and I put my feet up and I laid on it, oh, it was lovely, and I almost didn't want Mr. Yeah. Bonneville to come and sit on it yeah. with me. Because at night, I mean, these can recline, but we've not got them reclined at the moment. And Mrs. B's footstool, there's another footstool just under here, and these are. In our opinion, supremely comfortable. Oh, we've nodded off on them. We've. we've <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not sleeping now. <laughs> um, so you know, and, and ironically, I was in the Chandler's the other day, and one of our other friends, um, Jules and Val. By the way, Val, I hope you're all right. I've not seen you for about sixteen no, years. No, we haven't seen you for um, a long time. But Jules was in the Chandler's, and she just happened to um, over here, um, and I think Jules is going the other way. Mm. Um, but you know. I can't recommend these enough so but each to their own it's a pity in many ways well I'm sure you can now that things are starting to ease in terms of the you know the, the pandemic um, but it, if I could have gone to sit on that sofa before buying it I don't think I'd have bought it um, but as I say can't fault the quality can't fault the craftsmanship and and how how they went together and I thought it was very comfy Com yeah yeah so yeah, but new you know. brew n-u-b are you yeah online cool. it comes it comes on a pallet all uh cling filmed up and they'll deliver it to the end of your pontoon and and good luck <laughs> and then, yeah, good luck with building it no no first took us four and a half hours <laughs> but, but it was yeah and if we did it again it'd be four and a half hours <laughs> right moving on um peter and mo from york um via love life client york we love york don't we? yeah yeah um, i hope this question manages to get into the podcast and we really do enjoy your channel thank you thank you um do you miss living in a city think on one of your earlier vlogs you mentioned you were in the sheffield area we asked because we are thinking about doing the same thing as you have done but my wife and i think we will we will really miss york if you have missed city life 
What have you done to address it? Thank you again and keep the vlogs coming. No. <laughs> Can I just no. say, can I just say I, I go since since lockdown of these and we've been able to I think it's been for probably about the last three or four weeks I've been able to go back to Sheffield and visit my mom and my sister my brother my you know my, my family, family over there yeah. and um, and it's so funny because um, from Mercy Marina to Sheffield it's about 48 miles and I don't go on the motorway I go through some lovely villages Duffield Milford um, all those sort of things, Belper, and um, and it's just lovely. And then I get to Sheffield and I go, oh, I'm a bit like a startled mouse. Now. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want this. Um, I don't. I, I, I obviously it's my family home. Sheffield is where I was born and bred, and I love going to see them. But I also love getting in the car and coming back here to our tranquil place. Because don't get me wrong, you know, Derby's only eight nine miles away. You know, if you want to be in the city of Derby, we've got a lovely village here. You know, so. Do I miss the city think, life? No. Yeah, and it's difficult for me because I'm obviously not from Sheffield, so I have no attachment with Sheffield at all, other than obviously Mrs. Bonneville and her family. Anything that happens to the family or they're in trouble, I'm there. But Sheffield has no, uh, I have no attachment to Sheffield at all. Um, I found out a lot about Sheffield when, you know, the first lockdown, um, and it actually, um, it's not that I've, I, it's not that I didn't like Sheffield um, I just found out more about it and become more fond of Sheffield but I have no attachment to, 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 to that city because I'm not from there but I completely understand and see where Mrs B is coming from um, and the other thing is you know if you if you do decide to go and get your narrowboat and you're worried about missing York you can go and visit go back and visit for example I've never really classed myself as as, as, as being um, from anywhere and the reason being um, and, and please I'm not looking for violins and please don't judge um, but I was um, dropped off at boarding school at five um, and I, I kind of stayed there till I was about 16 um, so I didn't really have those formative years of you know being in a town or a city or ever um, the one place that in the UK that I've always considered kind of home is the Cotswolds and we recently went we went down to Broadway where we both lived um, so for me you know if you're missing it or you think you're gonna miss it go back and visit and if you're still really missing it I think you've got another decision to make but I think that's you know you, you don't know that emotions gonna be there until you try it and that's the gamble of buying a boat you know we went all in um, but we kind of knew didn't we that we would settle and not necessarily miss anything but also we planned for Mrs. Bonneville to be able to get back to Sheffield Correct. within and a couple of hours. And that's the thing. So maybe, you know, for, for me, if I, if I thought, you know, I couldn't see, we all couldn't see our families during the pandemic and yeah. that was horrible other than electronically. But it's, I, I can satisfy my need to see my family once a week and I get to see Sheffield again. Yeah. But I'm always glad to come back here because yeah. I must admit, I do, I do just, uh, this is my home. And, and just very quickly, if you can hear some, some other noises, it's the ducks and geese outside demanding to be fed, but we will feed them after <laughs> this. But yeah, thank you for that question. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, flip a coin. Bottom line, if we really didn't like this, we'd sell the boat and we'd go back on land. But we know this isn't one for our forever boat. On Our forever boat will be our wide beam. And we, we know that... In another 10 years, we'll... This is what we're going to be doing. Mm. Um, so We don't yeah. want to go back onto the land, do no, we? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but look, good question. It's one of those you, you've got to kind of flip the coin, spin the dice, and see what happens. Okay. Um, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Seriously, good luck. Um, Let us know. Yeah. Um, Matthew and Christine Dodds um, via lovelifetriumph.co.uk. We now live um, over in the US, uh, originally from Bedfordshire, and unfortunately don't have canals. If we did, we would be doing what you pair are doing. It's such an amazing life. Um, change sorry it's such an amazing life changing thing you have done it clearly looks like a great decision thank you we definitely think it is um, so Matthew and Christine's question we have friends back over in the UK that are seriously thinking about buying a boat and doing the same as you pair do you mind asking if you got a mortgage or loan for the boat you bought and if so uh, how such facilities are available thank you again for the brilliant and very funny weekly vlogs thank you're more you. than welcome thank um, you do you mind if I take No, it? you take it. Um, we haven't got a loan or mortgage. We bought the boat kind of outright, um, obviously from the proceeds of the house sale. 
Um, can you get a loan or a mortgage on a boat? I'm pretty sure you can get a, a loan. I'm sure there are credit facilities um, available for, for boats. I'm not so sure about a mortgage. My, um, my view, um, my suspicion is that the more folk I, uh, we've become to um, get to know and, and befriend here, and most people just seem to buy the boats outright for you know a number of reasons. They've either sold the property on land and that's what's enabled them to do it, or you know they've come to boating or been able to buy the boat for for a number of different reasons. Inheritance. They might just be wealthy folk. There are a lot of wealthy folk oh, yeah. um, on this marina. We trust know, me. We know some posh folk, don't we? So we know some folk who've got some serious mm. serious money. Um, and they are lovely, lovely folk. Mm. They really, really are. Um, so, can you get credit or, or, or mortgage facilities on boats? Absolutely. Um, I'm not 100% sure where you would go and, and how that would happen, but I know that is possible uh, in terms of financing. But for us, we, we, we bought it outright, um, and that was one of the considerations of moving from land um, was we would, we've got bills, of course, we've got bills, we've got monthly mooring fees. Um, we've got you know utilities. I, I'm just smiling because our, our our bills compared to land are just an absolute fraction. And we don't owe anybody anything. No, no we, everything we, are, we own, we yeah, own outright, don't we? We are completely, completely debt free. Well, other than our, you know, we've got a mobile phone contract, um, you know, and things like that. But yeah, we don't owe anyone a penny, and um, you know that was a lovely feeling and mm. continues to be a lovely feeling. Um, so yeah. I've, I've probably not answered that, you know, maybe as you would like. Um, if anyone out there does know, please drop a comment yeah. um, and we will forward this on um, in terms of what, what that facility... Is, is there a Hold company? On. Cuckoo. Oh, sorry. What time is it? Just to look at two. It's 12 o'clock. Right, that's two. Three. <laughs> Four. We're not going to edit this. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, oh ten. ten. So it's actually 12 right. o'clock, it's mm. noon, but our cook o'clock thinks it's 10 a.m. That just sums us up, doesn't it? Right, moving on. <laughs> right, Craig and Sue Thomas uh, via um, YouTube comments. Uh, me and the wife have followed you pair from the very beginning sorry <laughs> and Thank really you. miss and really miss the bike vlogs but also love the stuff you are doing now hope you don't mind us asking this question wendy and darren absolutely not at all keep them coming. fire away um, we don't duck anything um right question from greg and sue is we loved listening to your bike podcasts <laughs> <laughs> oh i forgot about this one yeah um really interesting especially the bmw gsa one don't start it on that again. Don't get me on BMW GSAs. Um, do you think if you had more time or if you were retired, you would travel more on the boat? Reason we ask is because we used to, sorry, we used to love listening to Mr. B describe the far flung places that he visited on the bike. You both clearly love travel and adventure, and we are guessing you aren't that bothered about taking the boat out and staying local. Keep the vlogs coming, and the odd bike one would be great. Um, Craig and sorry, Craig, Greg and Sue. I'll put my teeth in. Um, watch this space because we will chuck up the odd bike vlog. Um, I've we've recently purchased another bike, um, so the odd one, but v very very few and far between. So watch this space. Um, do we uh, do we miss travel? Well, funnily enough, we are we are actually going to go in july we're doing a bit of a tour on the bike we're not going to tell you where no but we are it's in the uk yeah but for obvious reasons we've got it we've got it planned um our little route that we're doing um hopefully we're going to do it on the bike because i'm uh, i've now got a date for my operation haven't i so yeah, uh, yeah. which is june the first yeah so hopefully by the time we do this tour i will have recuperated and, uh, and yeah. be able to sit on the bike and that's an interesting point we, we've not talked about this very often if in fact only once uh, and it was only kind of we just chucked it in there um, and this kind of leads into Greg and Sue's question um, if we were if I was retired Mrs B's retired if I was retired would we use the boat more of course we would um, which is why predominantly because I work 
which is why predominantly we, we haven't taken the boat out yet. And again, I don't mean any criticism to anyone here. Um, I am absolutely, we, sorry, are absolutely not interested in taking the boat out, um, um, you know, a, a mile up the canal. We, we, we walk further. And that's not criticising folk that do that. That's just not, you know, I've ridden a motorbike around the world twice and that's not me waving me willy at you. I say that because when we use our boat, I want to use it. I want to go on adventures and go further into the network, but I'm not criticising those folk who do that. But that's the main reason, and because I work. I haven't got the time to do that. Some folk will say, oh, you know, you've got internet. It doesn't work like that for me in terms of what I do for a living. I'm not going to go into that detail, but um, so I'm really restricted at the moment because I work and because I don't just want to take the boat a mile up the canal. But I want to stress, I'm not looking to upset anyone. If that's how those boaters want to live and use the boats, not a problem, not a problem at all. Um, we will take the boat out. Uh, we're going to take the boat out with the boys um, off Narrowboat Goldfinch. Um, and, you know, we'll probably go up the canal a few times just to get used to it. Let Mrs. Bonner will have a go, do the winding hole, come back, blah, blah, <laughs> blah. Um, and we'll probably do an overnight with the boys. But that will probably be it because um, we are perhaps maybe not different um, but because we have travelled extensively um, and I certainly have on the motorbike um, for me if you're going to go use something go do it that way um, and that really does sound as though I'm criticising other boaters and I'm not I'm really not use your boat however you want to use it but please please don't try to impress upon me how we should use our boat because you're going to get me smiling at you um, <laughs> But inside, trust me, some other stuff's going on. Um, so I really, really did enjoy that question. Um, but as I say, if we were retired, it would be a completely mm. different story. We'd plan a route, wouldn't we? And we'd yeah, yeah, be yeah. off for a, a week or two. Yeah. And another example of that is, you know, when I do get some time off, will we use the boat over the bike? Probably not. Um, and a great, great example of that is we recently visited, um, and it's coming up on a on a podcast, uh, sorry, on a vlog soon, we recently visited a huge motorhome dealership. Um, you know, once Mrs. Bonneville's had her operation and has recuperated from that operation, we'll be looking for a dog. Um, and we'd also like to do um, maybe a little bit of um, adventure in a motorhome, and we'd like to hire one. So there's a lot of stuff coming up in terms of that. but. And I don't want to embarrass Mrs. B. You know, a lot of folk have said, oh, you know, you could at least take your boat out up and down the canal. Mrs. Bonneville's waiting on an operation, and I don't want to embarrass her, but there's, there's days where she's been in huge amounts of discomfort since we've lived on the boat, and we've not talked about it, but now we want to just share it with you in terms of, you know, there's some other stuff that, God bless you lot, you don't know about. Um, and I say, once Mrs. B's fighting fit, uh, watch this space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great question. I don't moan, do I? No, I she doesn't moan. moan not at moan. all. But no. you know, I'm saying that as a husband. I love this lady dearly, and I absolutely. There's no way we're going to take a boat out when I know Mrs. B is not particularly comfortable. Um, and I know there's folk out there who do it single-handedly and all that stuff. Good on you. Um, but we're brand new to it, and we both want to experience the same thing. I don't yeah. want Mrs. B feeling uncomfortable. So we'll take the boat out, but as I say, under our own steam. And when my good lady wife is absolutely 100 percent absolutely i'm practically perfect like mary poppins moving on um pete and amanda griffiths via youtube um and <laughs> i want to put pete and amanda did actually send the question in uh, uh, well over two months ago and i'm really sorry i missed it the last time we did this so thank you for bearing with me um did actually send me a little nudge um so thank you you pair have inspired us to do the same the house is on the market and we are in the process of uh, researching marina moorings and boats <gasps> come uh, here come on this one <laughs> yeah come to mercy, come to mercy seriously. You'll love it. you won't go wrong um we have a question if that's okay of course it is um and actually let me just caveat because this is a couple of months old Pete and amanda i hope you sold your house <gasps> let us yeah. know where you are with the process and i say thank you for bearing with i'm sorry i missed it last month so we really, uh, sorry, we really aren't sure about how much to spend on our boat. Um, do we go all in? We think we have around about one hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and if we spend it, um, it, sorry, and if we spend this, we will get the perfect boat that won't need any work. Or do we go a little more conservative 
and have some money in the kitty for our next boat like you we want a wide beam not sure what to do any advice would be really appreciated now before I hand over to Mrs B the one thing I'm going to say before I forget there's absolutely no boat one thing we have learned whether you take your boat out or not you don't need to take your boat out to know this no boat's perfect ah, no boat this boat wasn't that's another story um, we've now got it to a, a standard that we like um, but there's no boat perfect there's boats on this marina that cost double what we paid oh, for yeah. ours and they've had serious issues I'm not looking to put you off Pete and Amanda I'm really not but please go into it with your eyes open no boat's perfect it's a bit fixable though oh, of course they are yeah. all boats are fixable yeah, yeah. but that's a budget issue yeah. all new boat. well our boat's got a 12 month warranty on it um, I think most new boats have got warranties um, I've had two things done under warranty uh, but the rest I've done myself because that's just the way I am um, but no boat's perfect but Mrs B's right they're all all, all fixable, fixable. Right, what's your view, Mrs. B? Uh, my view is... 150k budget. Do, oh. do you go all in or save a bit? Uh, save a bit. Yeah, we did the same. We, we did that. Yeah. Um, and we got a new boat. We got a beautiful yeah. new boat. And we... we don't get me wrong, we're not millionaires by a long shot, are we? <laughs> no, we're, just, we're just normal people that sold a house and got a certain amount of money and we bought the boat outright and we put some uh, uh, some savings away from it could could we have found one that was more expensive very probably but yeah. this is one we fell in love with we bought it you'll you'll get a beautiful boat for for that and be able to put some oh, money in your bank as well for 150 you know God. great of respect unless you are you know literally you know having it tailor bespoke built and you put in all sorts of you know work surfaces mm -hmm. and goodness knows what in it you will get off the shelf as such a beautiful, beautiful. boat um so if you do want to go all in you'll get a fabulous boat. Mm -hmm. Mrs B's right, we took a slightly different turn. Um, we, we looked at that bracket boat, um, but we decided to go for this. Some folk on the marina that watch this may be sitting in now rolling their eyes thinking, well, I wouldn't have done that. Again, that's your decision, you know, that's, you know I respect that. We love our boat, um, we walked on it, we knew it got some, not, not issues, but we knew it wasn't quite right in terms of layout and, and some of the fit and finish. And, and folk may walk through our boat now and think well it's still not perfect well we love it oh we love it we now. go in other we boats it. and we will probably think oh that's not for us so but that's deeply personal um yeah so we kind of held money back um and primarily because we know we are going to go wide beam we absolutely know our our kind of final boat will be a wide beam what we don't know is where it will be or when um, or when um but we know it'll be a wide beam um, will it be on Mercy Marina? Don't know. Or will it be in a warmer climate? Don't know. Um, but we kept a little bit of cash back. Plus, I'm also working. I'm 53 years young, so and we've um, got a pension and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. So we're kind of in a, a decent place um, in terms of what the future will look like. But we, I think, we're pleased we didn't go all in um, with 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 that amount of budget. We we we, we changed the fire. We yeah. had a bed extension. Um, you know we, we've done all sorts of different things and we had that luxury of knowing that we didn't spend right up to our limit yeah. so we could use that and still keep savings and stuff so yeah, yeah. our opinion I think is we would not have gone up to our absolute budget we're so glad we didn't and we got a brand new beautiful boat I mean yeah. can I just say it's a Tyler Wilson so it's Sheffield steel so what can I say oh yeah I'm gonna say this I, and I'm, I'm gonna probably sound all right and um, if you want do your research um, Tyler Wilson hulls are regarded as the best or, or certainly right up there the fit is is completely flip a coin but one of the main reasons we went for the boat it's a Tyler Wilson hull um, and they're great hulls um, they, they really are they're, they're like chieftain tanks and I'm not biased because um, I'm from Sheffield that was just a massive bonus that they are from Sheffield um, but look do your research equally we looked at second-hand pre-owned pre-loved boats and well, that's what we were going to get weren't yeah it? we were very very close in fact in fact we almost offered so we may have been sat on a boat it was about 10 years old wonderful boat um, but you know again they're out there you've got to. I'm gonna state the obvious you've got to do what we did um, we did an awful lot we, we, we've logged some of it but we did an awful lot where we didn't because we we couldn't be bothered to vlog oh because God. our priority was to look at boats go look at boats you've got to look at boats and, and if you like it get it yeah, yeah, yeah. go so quickly yeah. don't we if you're looking at a new boat the one thing i would suggest and we were a little bit naive if, if it's a new boat 
go through it properly I didn't I didn't go through this boat properly and that's my mistake uh, there were some issues they weren't huge um, but but you know that was my mistake if it's a new boat or a sec go through it properly um, I didn't do a snag list and that's a um, you know mistake I made our next boat good god I will be going through it with a absolute magnifying glass um, but hey ho that was uh, down to me but good question that and let us know where you are with your house sale yes. it's, it's a couple of months on and I'm sorry it's a bit late and come and move on to Mercia yeah you love it you love it Oh, you'll love this one, Mrs. B. Oh, right, go on then. And Andy and Petra from the Austrian Tyrol. <gasps> Why are we smiling? Um, if there's one place that would possibly get me off a boat, it would be the Austrian Tyrol to live. I absolutely love. Beautiful. I love the Alps, particularly the Austrian Alps. Or more, um, I, I love the Real de Kieser mountain range, which is a little area within the Austrian Tyrol. So, Andy and Petra from Austrian Tyrol, not jealous. Um, so jealous. <laughs> like you, we changed our life a few years back. We now live in the Tyrol. Oh. Sense my face. Green oh, envy. Beautiful, beautiful. And so, yeah, we now live in the Tyrol and love our life. I bet you do. Mm. We bought a property and renovated it, and now we have a lovely guest house. We are constantly asked by friends and guests um, how we did it and what advice you would give someone wanting to change their life exclamation mark just go do it you're absolutely right just go do it question do you get asked this and if so what do you say p.s when we get a day off we usually go over to Seoul and have food and beer in the Posford <gasps> the now, best hotel in Seoul a <laughs> couple of little things very quickly there Seoul is a, vi a village that we always end up using as our base when we are in the Alps on a motorbike and the hotel Posford p-o-s-t w-i-r-t i think mm. is without doubt the finest hotel family run family run wonderful property if you're ever in a the area Sol hotel posfer and we're not jealous that you go and have food there because so jealous oh we just right we had lots so, of beer and lots of food there didn't we <laughs> mrs b do we get asked this question um mm. and if we do what do we say basically you know oh you're so lucky you changed your life yeah and how do we answer it oh, if, if you again if you look back to some of our, our original vlogs with the boat when we first it was Mr B that first said last April shall we sell the house and buy a boat and I said not on your life don't be so stupid well, I swore a bit and stuff as well and, a bit um, and, and then when, when we sort of like got our head round it and it took maybe about four or five weeks or something like that I thought yes I, I felt so comfortable in this choice of what we were going to do that it never even dawned on me that we weren't going to do it and even before we'd sold the house and put the house up for sale i was already out of that house and on a boat mr b however it took even though he'd made the decision he was a little bit apprehensive because he was like oh well people what will people think are we doing the right thing we're in our 50s we're coming off the property ladder we're going on the boat and um, you know so it's such a huge decision but if if this pandemic has taught us anything it's taught us that you know what just do what is in your heart and if you've got the means to do it yeah. go and do it that's yeah, it I, I'm, I'm i'm the same I, I actually to be honest with you ray uh, sorry ray um andy and petra it, it it's mildly frustrates me now um the first couple of months when people would say you know i would engage and i still do engage with with folk that ask me but it does mildly frustrate me because you know it came up at work recently i was on a a good old zoom call and someone said to me oh god you're so lucky i was actually sat on the well deck um mrs b was over visiting her parents um over in sheffield and i it was a nice day and i sat and did some work on the well deck and i went onto a zoom call and i could see two colleagues looking at me but through me and i suddenly realized and i said to those two colleagues oh yeah we live on a boat and i flipped the laptop around and just panned around the marina got back to me and and the mouths were open wide and one of them said oh you know i envy you you're so lucky you know lucky you lucky you and and i i, I ended up kind of almost talking across him in terms of well, it's not luck you know we made a conscious decision it was a risky decision let's be honest with you because boats don't go up in price um you know that if, if the, the at the moment they're fairly stable but you know they're not it's not like bricks and mortar um, so there is a risk but I did say to those two colleagues it's nothing to do with luck 
you know we just decided primarily yes I sat one day um, you know it, it you know in the back office as such and just said to myself I want something different I want to do something different this isn't for me for the rest of my life and here we are in a boat that's not luck we made that happen um, and, and that's how I'd answer it you know now it's not luck you have to make it happen take that um, step take did. that step take the, take the gamble life is short I've said it on this podcast a couple of times already go live your life um, because it's really short so it's not about luck you have to make it happen you've got to make it yeah. happen right but thank you for that question and still envious about where you live very envious right so, say say hello to them from uh, yeah what do they call the lady that works in the restaurant and she was from Sheffield uh, not from Sheffield she was from England anyway whatever I'll not say go and say hello to her or anything Ray <laughs> how am I supposed to know the name of the lady know, in the I restaurant yeah, know, in the hotel um, Ray and Paul are from Cardiff they um I'm sorry sent it in via lovelifetriumph.co.uk oh my god you pair are so funny and so refreshing thank oh, you thank you and they've put in, in um capitals please don't change we won't what you see is what you get there's nothing hopefully our neighbors will attest to that can this just, is us can i just say when, when we first came on when we first came on we've been here about three or four weeks and somebody said to me you're just like you are on on the blogs and i went i know we know we're not everyone's <laughs> not cup scripted. of tea i know we're not um, everybody's cup of but tea but if we're not your cup of tea that's the beauty of the world wide web there's move on of stuff out there, yeah. um so please don't change we won't um, if folk don't like you then they just need to move on to another channel yeah? yes if people uh, want to watch and listen to endless drivel about locks being done and canal history then go and watch the other channels out there look I've read that out because as I say we, we read everything out um, but Ray and Paula you know I'd like to just gently challenge back you know there's room for everyone yeah um, everybody's on, got, yeah. on the internet we, um, we say, can I just say something as well I know I keep saying this can I just say um, our friends on uh, Narrowboat Golfing who do their own little vlogs and, and, and stuff and they do things on Instagram and things and uh, we were, I was out walking with them the other day and we were sort of like comparing what we do to what they do and I said the best way to compare it is me and Mr V are like a carry on film if you don't know carry on uh, just google it uh, you know there's a, there's a bit of Sid James and Barbara Windsor going on here and whereas the boys are very sophisticated their videos are so sophisticated and so lovely and, and the sound and the quality and everything and we are a carry-on film so and there's lots of different it depends what you want isn't it it's style and, and, and interpretation absolutely and you know and that's the beauty about YouTube and the internet you know if if if, if you, we're not for you that's fine um, leave us a comment let us know why um, and you know my views about fat bedroom warriors but you know and, and Mrs V's right you know, Narrowboat Goldfinch have got a lovely channel. Um, Paul, who does the video, such a nice ad. He's very creative, yeah. Um, and I love watching his stuff. So, but the point is, it's you know, it's a platform for everyone, right? So, question from Ray and Paula: uh, What's it like working from the boat? It must be frustrating not being able to cruise um, and work at the same time. Is the internet an issue? Does your employer mind you working from the boat? Too many questions. Um, <laughs> keep the vlogs coming and stay loyal to who you folk are. Thank Ray you. and Paula, yeah, Thank we, you. we will stay loyal. Yeah. Trust me, we go to bed knowing who we are. Um, what's it like working from the boat? Not a problem. Um, if you've not watched, I think it was our first or second podcast, we did. We did have, or I had some frustrations with the internet. Um, I went and actually watched a Foxes Afloat vlog in terms of how they um, manage their internet unashamedly unashamedly copied got all the same gear in fact well we updated upgraded the router and um, we've got a very powerful router um, all the kits fine but you've still got to be with a, um, a provider um, that you know has got decent internet connection um, and I tried a few pay-as-you-go just to test a few things before committing to a contract because I don't really like um, you know we've got mobile phone contracts but I didn't want another one just for data only but we went that way very recently with Vodafone um, Vodafone here for us seemed to be brilliant so mm. the internet connection is probably 95% um, I absolutely and this is back to the question earlier I cannot afford because I work I work for an employer that is massively flexible um, do they mind me living on a boat absolutely not they don't care 
Um, the only thing they care about is me doing the job quite rightly because they pay me a decent wage for it. Um, what they have said is, you know, they would be disappointed if they, you know, couldn't get hold of me because at the moment, because of the way we're living our life globally, you know, most of the work at the moment I'm doing is via, as I say, a Zoom call. So quite rightly, they've said to me, you know, if internet connectivity becomes an issue, you know, that will be a problem for them. And, and I would never, ever um, put myself or my employer in that position. Um, so that's why, as I say, staying here um, Monday through to Friday is always going to be the priority. Um, and as I say, taking the boat out of the weekend when I've got the inclination to do it is what I'll do. But, you know, working from the boat out on the cut for me isn't going to happen. Um, there are some folk on the marina that have said to me, oh, you know, you're worrying too much, you know, internet won't be a problem. Well, greatest respect to those folk. Um, I need the internet to be 100% reliable. And at the moment on the boat, where we are in the marina, it is. Um, and I don't want to, you know, get to that position and say with my employer. So, um, you know, it's not an issue. Does the employer mind? No. Um, and in fact, going forward, as we come out of this horrible pandemic, you know, certainly here in the UK, I will be, you know, going into the office one, maybe two days a week, or I'll be a little bit more mobile. So again, you know, taking the boat out and working from the boat for me just isn't going to happen. Um, way back in the day when we were looking for the boat, I had this romantic notion of it could possibly happen. And there are folk who, you know, can do that. Um, I just can't. So, but equally, as I say, I want to, you know, shout out for my employer or the company I'm working for at the moment. They are massively, massively respectful and flexible with it. So, big shout out for that. Mrs. B, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think you said it all. Because she doesn't work. She's retired, and I'm not resentful. She landed on her feet. Oh, I have put in the. I've put in the. 35 years of full time she, work. She, she knows I'm joking. Mm. Toby from Devon via Love Life Triumph will be down there soon, but we're not going to spoil <gasps> yes, it. Yes, we'll be down there. Uh, brilliant weekly vlog. Two funny folk who really do make my Sunday evenings. Keep it up and don't change. Question I lived in the marina for a few years and just wanted to know how you managed to avoid the moaners and whingers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't live on the marina. No. Um, sorry. What's the approach you take? Because marinas do have that reputation. Um, Mrs. B. What well, can I? Can I? Can I? Just, I keep saying. Can I just say? That's my catchphrase. Into yours is goodbye. Mine's. Can I just say? Um, there's one or two uh, people that um, that wouldn't know a smile if it jumped off the floor and hit them in the face. Um, <laughs> but, but that's it, everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, that's everywhere. You don't have to be on a marina to yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, but, but the, 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 they're a very, very, very uh, minority. I'm going to continue to smile and say good morning to everybody. If they don't want to do the same back, then that's absolutely up to them. The majority of people on this marina are lovely, pleasant, nice folk. Yeah, yeah. But there are one or two misses. Yeah, of course there are. You know. And look, you know, that's how Mrs. B deals with it. We've already talked about a related subject a few questions ago. Um, moaners and whingers, yeah, you get that in every walk of life, no matter where you're living. Um, there are those folk here, and as I say, you know, if you don't like the marina, move. Um, just go to a different marina. It's not, it's not um, hard, is it? It's not difficult. You know, when I hear it, I smile. I'm very polite. I don't want to fall out with anyone um, because it's a community, and I like the community we're living in. But yeah, there are the odd, there are the odd, you know, individual. Oh, it's this, it's that. Well. You know, I almost want to say to them, you know, just, you know, uncouple your boat from your pontoon and, you know, go to another marina. There you go. Um, you know, the one thing I would say, um, do mar you've said here marinas have a reputation for that. I've not come across that, if I'm honest with no. you. Um, but I, I understand your question, but yeah. I'm going to bat it back in terms of it's the same here as it is on land. Yeah. Um, how you choose to deal with it is, is, is up to you, I say. I, I smile. But inside here, I'm thinking, why don't you just go move your boat to another marina when, and go out on the coast? When I was on land and dealing with everything, um, I was disgruntled from Sheffield and I used to get really annoyed at stroppy everything. people. I used to get annoyed at everything. everything. Whereas now, I have such a lovely, calm, peaceful, fabulous life here that this is why it goes over my head. Yeah, you know, if, if, I come, if I'm confronted, by some yeah. miserable. What we had to get out of the house, it, she was going to implode. Yeah. What's that film falling down? 
No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I was ready. I was like that. No, no. <gasps> right. Eva and Alan from Peterborough. Uh, and this is via the comments section. Uh, excellent weekly vlogs. We love the style and approach you both take. Please Thank keep you. them coming. Absolutely. Uh, Eva and Alan's question is, what do you plan on doing when you go on holiday? Brackets, whenever we are allowed. Close brackets. Will the marina staff keep an eye on your boat? Question mark. We ask because we would like to do what you are doing, but have to travel a lot with our jobs. I'm not sure what plans you need to make with the boat when you're away from it. Um, well, the one thing we know for absolute sure, we, we, we're lucky for a number of reasons. As I say, we've got fabulous neighbours. We've got a, a, a chap right next to us at the moment, um, Alex. Um, I know for a fact we'd look after our boat yeah, yeah. Uh, if we were away. And as I say, Paul and Neil, um, the boat next to us, uh, next to Alex. So we, we've got brilliant neighbours. Um, we've got another chap just behind us, uh, Ian, um, Narrowboy Ro Royston. We're just so lucky to have yeah. folk around us that would, you know, keep an eye on our boat. Um, but equally, I know for a fact that if we popped into the marina and said we were going to be away for a period of time, they'd probably, you know, I'd probably give the key there, but I'd also give the key to any of our neighbours as mm. well. So for us, um, Eva and Alan, it, it's, it's fairly um, comfortable in terms of how that would leave us feeling. Yeah. We are going to do something in July, um, which we'll probably vlog. Um, that is going to, you know, see us being away from the boat for, you know, a while. Um, but again, I say we, we haven't got an issue with, with, with you know, who uh, will look after the boat for us. And you, you have people um, that that uh, uh, buy a boat, moor it here, and just use it for leisure. Leisure. Yeah. Th there's there's some boats that are only used maybe two or three times uh, a week out of a the year. whole year. So mm. so once you're on a gated community, which is what this is, you I want to say 100%. Nothing's 100%. No. But you so your boat is so safe and secure, um, you know. And, and if you know your neighbours, they'll pop in and just yeah, yeah. you know. Because uh, we said when we're away, I'm going to ask one of our neighbours, whether it be Alex or Neil or Paul, to come and de-spider it when we come back. <laughs> so yeah, I think at the end of it, you, you know, you've got to make your own arrangements. Um, check in with what the marina offer, um, or what they would suggest. But again, it's again, it's, it's that not community. a problem. Yeah, it's and it's not a problem. Not an you can do it. You can no. absolutely do it. I'll, even if you have to travel to Australia and back, you could still have your boat yeah. and, and know that it's going to be safe on a marina. Right, we've got two questions to go. I don't know how long this is, podcast is going to be, but hey, oh, we've got two to go. So if you still, uh, if you have still stuck around, yeah, I'll put thank my you. teeth in. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Right, Stephen and Paula Ritchie from Tyne and Weir. And this has come via lovelifetriumph.co.uk. You pair are generally crazy. <laughs> and we both love the vlogs thank oh, you thank you uh, we have a very very quick question um, we are also new to boating and would love to know what's the best bit of advice you have received to date that's a really good question yeah that's a very what's good the best question best bit of advice we've received to date um, about boating yeah well, best uh, bit of advice I've received to date sorry is if the boat's rocking don't knock <laughs> I think it's just wishful thinking there on his part, isn't it? <laughs> the boat's rocking. Don't come a knocking. <laughs> uh, best bit of advice. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with um, earlier. Um, um, one of our neighbours from Narrowboat Royston, top bloke, Ian, top top bloke. Um, he's got two lovely dogs and a lovely wife as well. Um, recommended we go by that dehumidifier. That's a brilliant piece of advice. As I say. You're kidding yourself if you think you haven't got some condensation in your boat, um, you know. And we don't use that now in the summer. Well, technically, it's May, so I don't expect to use that probably till September, October time. But through winter, um, it was on, as I say, once a day for a couple of hours, um, and it was gathering you know, only you know a liter or so of water, um, but it was taking that away from um, our boat, particularly the bedroom. So. That I think is the best bit of advice I've certainly had is go and invest in one of those. If you've not got one on your boat or some form of getting rid of condensation or capturing it, I think you're kidding yourself. You're going to have problems. Um, Mrs. B? Right, so the best bit of advice I've been given is we, we keep joking that we're, we're floaters, not boaters. And uh, I was chatting to a, a lady the other day um, and 
she said, you know what? Take no notice of what anybody says, no notice. Your boat is your home and it's your life. Do not be swayed by people constantly looking, going, well, you haven't taken your boat out. You're not a real boat if you don't take your boat out. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take your boat oh, out? When boring. are you taking your boat yeah, out? Correct. Are you taking your boat out? What about this weekend? Why don't you take your boat out? And you're like, <gasps> yeah, it does get a no, bit tiring. We love the lifestyle. Yeah, 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 we love yeah. the lifestyle. So, yeah. so uh, the the lady that I spoke to, thank you so much for the yeah. conversation we had. But we're not going to be swayed by anybody. You take your boats out as much as you want. Whenever you, do you whatever want to. Whatever you want to do. Correct. But we're not going to do that until we want to do yeah, it. Yeah, just on that point, someone actually said to me, and again, I'm not going to say who, but on the marina here, not on our pontoon, not on our pontoon, but a couple of weeks ago, someone was just blown away with, um, you know, how many um, places I'd been to on my motorbike. This is long before I met Mrs. B. Long. I was a, a wee lad, um, and I did a pretty much a global trip. Um, I hadn't got a pot to you know what in. Uh, and didn't sleep um, in a building for nearly a year, but took my motorbike to some places that I'll never forget, if, if only YouTube was around then. Uh, and the guy I spoke to was blown away with that. Um, you know, and, and, and I kind of rode off thinking, well, you know, that's, that's who we are, and that's how we kind of roll when we're on the bike. Um, and I could easily say that to folk here, in terms of, you've got a motorbike, but you don't use it. It's the same thing. So. Go live your life. Go use what you like to use, how you like to use it. Mrs. B made a brilliant point there. Brilliant point. As usual. Yeah, <laughs> as usual. Final question. Thanks for sticking around. Um, Chris and Paula, don't know where you're from, but it's from uh, coming via our website. You've put here, absolutely love the channel and the weekly vlog. Thank please, you. please keep them coming. You two absolutely have us in stitches <laughs> um, and have always been true to your word. We sleep well at night. Um, question we both would love <laughs> just talked about this um, we would both love to know as we are also mad keen bikers what you pair would prefer to do another trip around the world or the complete canal network well can I can I can I start that can I start yeah. that so as Mr B said earlier if Mr B was retired uh, uh, the same as myself then we would look at um maybe half and half uh you know we could have a we could have a, um a, a plan of action we could go and you know do what we want to do on the motorbike maybe to go through europe on the motorbike which we love doing and then we can go and search out what do you call that i can never pronounce it in wales the big pontisclin or something oh langoflin viaduct that's all i can't pronounce it's it it's called it begins with p though doesn't yeah, yeah. it pontis something so i think if mr b was retired we would do half and half we'd love the motorbike tours absolutely love being on the motorbike we love being on our boat and we'd have the freedom because mr b wasn't working to be able to plan some routes because we're not just going to go and sit on the the canal outside we want to go somewhere so we we go right next week we'll do stratford on the boat and then maybe the following month we might have a tour around somewhere else on the motorbike you know yeah I, i'm mrs <laughs> bonneville might be surprised but i wouldn't do that um, it's a great. Ooh, yeah, I was almost saying. You wouldn't that. do that. <laughs> the, but the, the question, the, but the bottom line, the question was, if I've read it right, and I've read it a few times actually, because it's a good question. The question is, boat or bikes for travel? And for me, every day, I, I spent nearly thirty years of my life in the motorcycle industry. Um, it's ingrained in me. Um, and yes, as I say, I was fortunate enough as a young lad. Um, it, I think the context is important to answer your question. I spent a couple of years racing motorbikes, had an accident, spent a long time in hospital, knew I couldn't race anymore, had my license taken off me, so went and qualified as a motorcycle instructor. But also very early on after the kind of recuperation from my own motorcycle accident, I just literally jumped on, well, the original Africa twin, there's another story, what a bike, and pretty much went around the world with it to clear my head um, and ever since then for me travel on a motorbike has been the absolute be all and end all so exploring the network on a boat or a motorbike trip around the world every day of the week a motorbike for me the boat is brilliant and we know we're going to end up on a, a wide beam but I'm going to be really really clear this boat whilst I love it and the wide beam we get will be 
beautiful it's a bed and it's a lifestyle travel for me is a motorbike every single day um mrs b's kind of view there oh i was i'd love to do that if i was retired we probably would be doing it but um if if funds were no option uh, it would be wide beam uh, moored up somewhere the wide beam would be like a floating gin palace um but there'd be the bike outside and we'd be traveling um well we can still get our leg over it correct um but then equally there's another mix um you know we're getting a dog soon which is why we've referenced earlier um you know the motorhome you know hiring a motorhome we'll still be traveling on on the bike but the dog is going to be arriving soon so you know there's a lot to consider but you know gun to head you know canal boat explore the network or motorbike every day for me motorbike half it's and in half my for me. blood and, yeah and half, half and half for me. mrs b that's a re do you know that was a really good question so i will leave you with some tarpaulin next to your next to your motorbike and i'll take the boat out uh for a, for a week or two yeah. and then he can be sleeping under his bike or in the shed we've got a shed now you can sleep you in know, that and that just again you know wendy you know mentioned it earlier into the this podcast and she's nailed it on the head you know that is i think a, a, as clear as anything uh, as an example as to why we just love this lifestyle for me this isn't a hundred percent you know i want to i never want to go and live on the canal network not interested you know continuous cruising with a lot of respect for you loads of respect um, loads but i will say this as well and i'm not getting you know testy about it but you know folks sometimes oh you know continuous cruising it, it, it's hard and rough so going around the world on a motorbike believe you me um you know i've got a lot of respect for continuous cruisers mm. i just don't want to do it but please please don't judge us as as being a bit you know of, of you know snowdrops we ain't snowdrops we just want to live on a boat because it's a lovely place to live and a lovely lifestyle and it's got a great bed blah 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 but for me going around the network uh, on a boat versus a motorbike every day every day motorbike but mrs b is 50 50. imagine what's going to happen off camera now no i'm only joking i'm just going to go out with the boys when we can i'm just going to say bye mr b and me and the boy on me and alex just will leave go me somewhere. with my motorbike yeah and i'll be happy no um thank you for listening thank you for sticking around um we mentioned at the top end of this podcast the last couple have been a little bit out of sync as i say we we kind of want to keep committing to the last sunday of the month but things have gotten the way and i've always said my work takes priority um and that unfortunately has just got in the way of a few things recently can i just say the next podcast we do i will have had my operation and i will be feeling wonderful hopefully Sponover will be a total handful i am gonna milk it for what it's worth i'm gonna milk everything right thank you for listening um as I say, if you want to click the link in the description, uh, if you're on a smart TV, it'll be in the description, or you can click a link here or wherever, um, but you can listen to it in the good old fashioned um, format of a podcast if you want. Uh, the weekly vlog uh, returns next Sunday, so stick around for that. And as always, we do mean it. We do mean it when we say thank you for the support. We yeah. really do mean that. Yeah, we so love it. Um, we will see you for the weekly vlog uh, next Sunday. Mrs. Bonner will say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yep. Bye. Oh, See I've you. Got to get out of these lovely chairs. See In you next fact, week. when I switch this off, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you probably will. Oh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.